Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we learn about Corona Volume Grid, which allows you to render objects which are truly volumetric and based on a 3D grid, as opposed to meshes and geometries. Before starting this lesson, I want you to open your browser and go to openvdb.org slash download. And if you come down here, they have these sample models. Go ahead and download these four files, this explosion, fire, smoke one, and smoke two, and extract them into a folder on your hard drive. In the project folder for this course, you have this openvdb folder that contains those four openvdb files and bunch of others. You can load them into your scenes from here. We use Corona Volume Grid to load volumetric files stored in formats such as OpenVDB. Actually, Corona Volume Grid at the time being only supports OpenVDB. OpenVDB is an open source library developed by DreamWorks Animation and it is capable of efficiently storing and manipulating volumetric data. I want to show you the workflow and how to use OpenVDB files in Corona and hopefully make you more interested in the subject and maybe you can learn how to create OpenVDB data on your own with plugins like FumeFX or Phoenix FD. If I go to the perspective view and run the interactive renderer, we have this simple lighting setup and a backdrop geometry with a dark material applied to it. Let's stop the interactive renderer and get back to the camera. To add a volume grid, go to the command panel, create, corona, and select a C volume grid or corona volume grid and click and drag in the viewport. Now in the modify panel, first we need to load an open VDB file. So click this load from file button and in the OpenVDB folder, let's load this fire.vdb file. I'm going to scale it up and position it so it kind of fits our camera angle here. And run the interactive render. This is what we get by default, which is not very accurate representation of the file. And the reason being is that the emission channel for this particular file needs to be set to density and not temperature. For most OpenVDB file, the emission channel is temperature or heat, but for this file, it's density. And now we get this more kind of normal looking fire. The volume has three attributes, emission, absorption, and scattering. And combining these three, you can create shader for fire, explosions, smoke, clouds, steam, and so on. Emission controls the emissive contribution of the volume. And as I disable this emission, we get basically just smoke. Scatter decides how light is scattered inside the volume. We can enable it for now and absorption controls how far light can travel inside the object before it is fully consumed. The higher the absorption, the thicker the volume. Let's enable emission again. The first thing to do in order to control how the emission looks is to select the proper channel. In this channels combo box, all the available grids or channels that this particular OpenVDB file has is listed which in this case are density and temperature. Another OpenVDB file might have uh, density, temperature, heat, velocity, and so on. We also have this constant channel, which no matter what OpenVDB file you have, it's always here. And it is a single solid color, which is applied to the whole bounding box of the volume. And it's actually more useful as a channel for scattering section. I'm gonna set the channel back to density. The next important value in the emission section is scale. Uh, scale makes the overall emission more or less intensive. Let's set the scale to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 
one, two, five, and 10. So higher values make the emission more intensive. Let's set it back to one. Tint color here works as a filter to the whole emission color. As I change the tint color to green or to blue or to uh, pink, you can see how the emission color gets filtered with the tint color. Let's set the tint color back to white. But how do we get those fiery colors in the first place? That's what mode controls. By default, it's set to black body, which simulates color emission of a black body at given Kelvin temperature. Raw data uses the original color and intensity, which is stored in the VDB file. In this case, it's none. Uh, channel mapping uses custom setting from the channel color mapping tool. So in this mode, you can click on this uh, channel color mapping button and control how exactly the emission looks. Uh, by default, we have this yellowish reddish gradient uh, to simulate, uh, you know, fire, but we can change the gradient color and achieve different looks. Let me change the mode to black body again. Next, we have absorption, which controls how far light can travel inside the object before it is fully consumed. Absorption scale makes the object absorb the light faster or slower. Higher values mean faster absorption, which result in thicker smoke and lower values will result in thinner smoke. Let's try scale of 0 0.2, 1, 2, four, eight, 10, and 20. So higher values mean thicker smoke. Let's set it to five for now. Using tint, you can filter the overall absorption color. This map can be used as a mask for absorption. The mask is applied in 3D space, so adding a noise map will result in having a 3D noise mask applied to the object or the volume. If I open up Material Editor, we have this noise map. Let's connect it to the tint map of the absorption section. So you can use this tint map in the absorption section to add extra detail to the volume or just add a bit more, I don't know, turbulence or something like that. You can use different maps for that. I'm going to clear this map for now. Next we have scattering, which controls how light is scattered inside the volume. Scatter scale makes the volume scatter light more or less. Higher values mean more scattering and brighter overall color. So let's try 0.1. 0 0.2, 0.5, 1, 2, and 5. So higher scale values make the smoke and the volume to look brighter. Let's set it to 2 for now. Scattering channel selects the channel present in the open VDB file that will be used for scattering. Usually it should be set to constant to have the whole medium scatter light in the same way in the areas where absorption allows this. Scattering tint color filters the scattering color and this is the color you need to change to get colorful smokes. So if I use a purplish pinkish color as the scattering tint color, as you can see now we have this purplish pinkish color. Single bounce only should be enabled unless disabling it is absolutely necessary. When enabled, only single bounce direct lighting will be scattered in the medium. And this results in a biased, uh, that means a bit darker, but much faster rendering. When you actually disable this option, you can get more realistic renders, but the render time can go through the roof. 
In the rendering section, we have interpolation, which controls the speed versus accuracy ratio. None will give fastest rendering, but lowest quality with a possibility of pixelated or blocky appearance of the grid. Linear is a compromise between quality and render speed, and this mode is used by default. Quadratic will produce best quality, but at the cost of render time. Step size controls how many volumetric steps can be used to render the volume. Higher values mean faster rendering, more noise, and higher possibility of artifacts. Uh, and lower values mean better quality but slower rendering. If I set the step size to something like 10 centimeters, now you can see the volume has a very general shape with no detail. And if we try something like 0.5 centimeters, now we get much more details compared to the previous render. I have already loaded some other OpenVDB file in the scene. Let's hide the current one and unhide the first volume grid. For this one, I have this explosion.vdb loaded. And you can check out the exact parameters in the volume grid to achieve this look. For the second volume grid, I have loaded this smoke.vdb file and by changing a few settings and colors, we get this colorful, wispy look. For the third volume grid, I have loaded this default flame.vdb. You can check out the settings of each one of them. For the fourth one, I have loaded the fire.vdb with thicker and whiter smoke simply by increasing the absorption scale and scatter scale to 5 and 10 respectively. And for the last one, we have this smoke puffy.vdb. And uh, I've increased the absorption scale. If I start decreasing the absorption scale to lower values, you can see we get this kind of thin and different results compared to what we just saw. So that's about Corona Volume Grid. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.